Hey, this is Dave from metalepidemic.com. Thank you for checking out our YouTube video. Please feel free to hit the subscribe button below if you like this type of content, and we hope you enjoy the review. <laughs> What is up guys, Dave, Duncan and Kyle, back from Metal Epidemic for a new album review. For this album, Duncan, Kyle and I have been checking out the new album from Indian folk metal band Bloodywood. The band's new album Rack Shack will be released on February 18th. So, um, Rack Shack, meaning protector or guardian in Hindi, is the debut album from India's Bloodywood. Uh, the band formed in 2016 and is made up of Karan Kitiar on guitar, flute and percussion, Raul Kerr on rap vocals, G Giant Bahuda <laughs> Badula, Badula on aggressive vocals, yep. and um, guitarist Karan also composes all music and also produced the album. So, um, cast your memory back to a couple of months ago when we checked out the uh, mighty Gadar um the uh the first track on uh this new album from bloodywood and i think like after during the track after the track we were pretty pretty excited like we were we were down with that we were really enjoying uh, a bit of guitar um kyle in particular was was pretty keen um another album that you were kind of anticipating in 2022 mm -hmm. um but apart from that i hadn't heard anything else i never listened to any of the singles nothing i just thought we'll, we'll wait to the album and then we'll, we'll get into that so, um, Kyle, how did you get on with one of your most anticipated releases of 2022? This is the danger. Never tell Dave that you're anticipating anything right. because he'll come to you <laughs> yeah. right at the start. Right. It's like right. the floor is yours. Take the floor. And I'm like, I'm going to take it away. <laughs> <laughs> there are some very interesting and really good parts to this album. There really are. There are some, there's a lot to like. There's some very, like, some of the parts, I'm just like, that really works. And it's so good. Like, mm. the mix of the Indian rhythms and the Indian instruments in with the metal works so very well. And I was surprised, because I'm not really a fan of Indian music at all. Like, I think the sounds are annoying, and I think the rhythms are weird. And, you know, that's my opinion. It's it's not true, but it's my opinion. But it works so well with this. For some reason, when they do the, one of the rhythms, I think, I can't remember which song it is, but they do it on the guitar, and it sounds incredible. I'm like, this works great. And when they're doing that, they're singing in their in their native language, and the and the guys actually doing the, uh, the you know the vocal screaming and stuff, it works really well, and I enjoyed it quite a lot. And it's got sort of like a it's got like a new metal new metal feel to it and stuff like that. So it's just not bad at all. There's actually some very good stuff on this. The mix of all of that stuff mm. did not expect it. Really does work, and it does stand out. Though it sounds quite unique. I've not really heard anything like this before in my life at all ever. Mm. So it's like that. But this it kind of falls apart when you start adding in like the mid 2000s scene kid synth like you know it's very dated sounding it's you've heard it all before and it doesn't sound good it doesn't work uh the bad new metal rapping as well is like, mm. <laughs> like it has its place and that was a decade or two ago <laughs> uh, so i'm like this i don't know i think if they there's a lot to like here and you, you've got to listen to it a few times to really like give it like the time it deserves because mm. It's not a long album, but it's long enough to like sort of not get sick of it, but to hear everything they have to offer about two thirds of the way through the song, through the album. Mm. And then the last few songs are like, mm, OK, we've heard it before, except for the last song. Actually, the first like half or the first third of the, the last song is absolutely fantastic. I really that was one of the best songs, I think, it was especially the first half of that last song. Uh, maybe it's not the last song. Uh, Zanjiro Se, I think it's called. I'm not sure. Anyway. It was great and like <laughs> and yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, the closing track did have a kind of similar feel to the opening track you know they had a, a kind of similar kind of groove about them yeah which was pretty cool. mm. yeah and it was just like it was absolutely well, they had the, the female vocalist i'm not sure because my order got all messed up on the download so it was one of the songs but mm. it was it had a female vocalist in the beginning and all these indian things and then it came in with a bit it wasn't such such a heavy produced sound mm. and it was really really nice and i enjoyed it so i think for this band, if they removed the cringy rapping and the 
fucking terrible synth stuff and lean more into the metal and the native elements that they have from the Indian music, I think they would succeed on a much higher level because this is, it's not a bad album. It's not a great album. And I think they've just sort of taken too many things and mashed it all together. It's mm -hmm. like, is it new metal? Is it, you know, what is it? What, are you, what have you got here? Just, the Indian metal should be its own thing because it's just fucking great when they do those things and concentrate on it. Um, but yeah, other than that, it was uh, it's pretty good. <laughs> the production, though, I did want to touch on that because I feel like it's a bit overproduced because mm. the, the it, like I said, the, the folk instruments, the Indian stuff, I don't remember any of the names of the instruments right now, but they, mm. the, even the percussion sounds really natural and good and you can hear that like they're playing it properly and it's all recorded really nicely, but mm. the guitar is a bit too overcompressed and I can barely hear the bass. It's just sort of a low rumble. There's no top end in the bass really for me mm. and the drums, man, are oh, they're far too overproduced. It's just, it's just takes all down a bit too much the natural roaring and guttural screams of the one vocalist is great but the rapping again is a bit too overproduced it's too compressed there's too much stuff going on if you know what i mean so i think they need to sort of i think as a debut it's it's pretty good into letting you know what the band could sound like if they refined it mm. but i think they've got a way to go until we get like something really great that can be enjoyed by a lot of different people so mm. i mean not 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 a bad start by any means but i think they could be stronger if they refine things a lot more okay no worries. Um, Duncan, what do you think? It's safe to say I enjoyed this more than Kyle. Um, <laughs> Interesting. And I, I, I don't want to put my... I, I think I'm probably going to come in with the highest score for this, I think. <laughs> um, uh, let me tell you for why. A lot of those cringy elements that Kyle really didn't like, I liked. Um, <laughs> I knew you the, would. That's the thing. I'm sat again. This I, is a Duncan album. This part oh, here, Duncan's going to love it. <laughs> well, like to, to let people peek behind the curtains here, I listened to this as soon as it came in, like as soon as it came in, and you guys hadn't yet. And I, 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 we sat down, we were chatting just before Christmas, and I said, listen, don't go in expecting a full album of guitar, because that ain't what you're getting. <laughs> like, what you're going to get is, and the, the exact words I used were, baby metal, right? Because there, there's a huge... Huge, like I, I mean, it's not carbon copy, but there is a what all the the what they've done is taken the template of what Baby Metal do with Kawaii Metal, um, essentially mixing all those Japanese elements in with mm. you know new metal, thrash metal, speed metal, all that stuff, and kind of superimpose that on top. All they've done is they've taken their native kind of folk music style and done the same. Mm. Where where things are different for them is that I think because they are predominantly, they have the gent kind of mm. hierarchy, which is there's a guitarist in the band who's clearly a multi-instrumentalist who also produces everything and the rest of the band fit around that. Mm. You know what I mean? That's that's yeah. kind of how it sounded to me. Mm. Um, and that's what separates them from a, maybe a baby metal where it's all session musicians coming together to write songs and then they put that element over the top. That's the big difference. But like, if you listen to tracks like "Edge," which is the, the the second track, I mean, it's basically using the elements of EDM, and that's it's all the way through that first uh, baby metal album. Um, it has the hip hop, which is kind of in the baby metal stuff as well. Um, the on the heavier side for the vocals, um, I think the guy actually sounds at times like kind of 2000, 2001 era Corey Taylor, but mm. better. Um, <laughs> and that his voice isn't fucked um, <laughs> but he does he has a, he has a great tone because he, it's aggressive but it's completely audible you hear absolutely everything he's saying it's all nuanced and really well done the rapping's cheesy there's no getting around that but it's rap and metal and I think if we sat down and thought of how many rap metal bands we could think of there's maybe only about two that don't have cheesy vocals I'm sorry, that's just what we do when you when you take that element and add it to metal, you're innately making it a bit cheesy. And so I, I don't I, these lyrics are nonsense. Um <laughs> but it's it kind of works for me and I know they do have a, a kind of a, a kind of more political leaning towards the the kind of lyrical content and all the rest. Not being able to gravitate to that. It's like the first time I listened to like some of those weirder tracks on from Rage Against the Machine and what that it's cool I, I don't know what he's so angry about <laughs> as I sit here in my you know kind of middle class Scottish house <laughs> <laughs> so. 
don't know what you're on about in Vietnam. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's, it's those it's those sorts sorts of elements. I think it's a little bit too overproduced. Um, I love that guitar tone. Fucking oh man, just a whole album of that, and I would have been happy. But I I think where I I mark them up is that I think I've heard plenty of the JMT sending bands. I don't know why I'm doing it. That's what they call themselves. I've heard plenty of those bands that like are clearly very one dimensional and they think they're a lot smarter than they are. And these guys, I think, pull together a lot of different styles and a lot of different influences. And yes, it does feel at times like it's we're throwing everything against the wall and we're waiting to see what sticks. But a lot of it for me actually stuck to the wall. So, you know, not everything works. And I think mm. at times they add that one element too much that I'm like, I oh, wouldn't have done that. But I think there's a handful. I think there's a good EP's worth of really, really, really well written, really creative... Uh, Indian inspired metal music I, 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 I like that there's a lot of it that is kind of forgettable and I, I think that's where I land on it like the stuff that I like on this album I really really like and the stuff that I dislike I don't hate I just think and that's a shame so <laughs> it is, it's a completely inoffensive album to me and there's about three or four songs that I've played quite a bit <laughs> quite a bit uh, so yeah I, I'm not I'm not as maybe I'm not in the position where it's interesting that the, the lead single was Gadar and then the second single was Aj um, because those two songs sound completely different mm. um, and I think anyone that was in on the ground floor of I'm getting an album of Gadar like Dave's about to tell you was um, maybe got a shock when the second track kicked in. I'm so accustomed to listening to like J rock, J pop stuff. That's my I've said it before. I've got a weird kind of clicky attitude towards that. That bands that switch up things very very quickly into genres which don't necessarily make sense. The most isn't necessarily a bad thing for me. I just think they're at times the level of writing if you're going to do edm music that's cool i like edm but you know it has to be really good edm yeah. otherwise it's just like a mediocre version of that and that's where it if you're going to throw 20 styles into an album be very good at those 20 styles otherwise what it does is it makes the metal stuff which is clearly your bread and butter and clearly the stuff that you're really really good at sound different infinitely better than some of the other stuff on there so yeah I, to me it is, a, it is a middle of the road album it's a good listen it's a, it's a good you know it's a good time mm. um, I think this could have been an EP and I, that's mm-hmm. where I would have leaned to I think an EP um, and then over time build out that sound would have been a smarter approach mm. yeah definitely. Dave we spoke outside the cinema and you were overjoyed about this one <laughs> so I can't wait to to, to hear what you made like uh, remember Dave only ever speaks positively on an album so this will be fun Dave what did you make of a bloody wood um what can be said about Rack Shack um I will I will start with the positives um I think um the guitarist composer um, Karan clearly a talented guy um multi-instrumentalist and he, he plays at a very high level um I imagine he's one of these guys that can turn his hand to anything instrumentally yeah um and also like for our first album i didn't really have that many issues with the production um i thought it was produced pretty well um i think you often find bands that are in like in charge of the production on a debut could make a a giant mess of it um because this is their their first attempt at an album but um karan has obviously been at this a while um it sounds very professionally done um, yeah, there's a lot of kind of modern metal studio techniques going on here, you know, drums for one. But I think for the most part, that the metal side of the album sounds pretty fresh. It's punchy, the guitar tone has plenty of weight to it. Um, and I think the production kind of suits their sound, to be honest. Um, they also cover a lot of um, important topics lyrically. You know, they're covering things like mental illness, uh, poverty, mm-hmm. corruption, um, overcoming divisive politics. So. Um, I appreciate that they've took the time to give a lot of the tracks kind of meaning and a message. Um, and as we said, the album, obviously, it starts on a high because you're hit with guitar, guitar as an opener. Um, mm-hmm. So I must admit, I was I was kind of in the groove. You know, I was enjoying <laughs> the start of the album. 
you know, we've got this kind of like new gent kind of sound, you know, infused with the, the kind of um, Indian sounds and the, the rap metal as well. Um, and that felt like the kind of core of their sound. Like, if you go back and like, listen to I'd, I'd heard singles before Gadar, um, the old stuff like Ari Ari from back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that, that it kind of leans on that side of things, you know what I mean? Um, they did they did say though, um, however, that they were going to be pushing the boundaries on this one and experimenting with incorporating new sounds and ideas from genres at the other end of the spectrum. Um, and you, you'll hear that, you know, from track two. Um, there's a, an increase with the, as you said, more kind of electronic, kind of almost like a kind of el- electronic metal core or electronic yeah. core, um, you know, channeling bands like a little bit of We, we Butter the Bread with Butter or Eskimo Cowboy. Um, and when I first heard it, I was like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't what I was expecting, but um, we'll go with it for now, you know, we'll see what's happening. Um, obviously, the, the Indian folk part of the sound still gives them a bit of that kind of individuality and um, which yep. i liked but I, I i did feel like like some of the riffs and the ideas electronically were a, a little bit um unoriginal uh, like it like i've heard it done before by a thousand other kind of metalcore type bands um and then track three kicks in uh sanjiro c or say um and it starts like it started a bit kind of almost kind of lincoln park-esque mm-hmm. um it felt like the, the, the kind of album's first venture into a almost kind of like ba- ballad type territory. You know, you've got the acoustic guitars and the synths, the uplifting chorus. Um, and again, the kind of heartfelt, almost kind of Linkin Park type rap vocals as well. Um, I, I felt that that track was a little bit early in the album, if I'm honest. Um, I maybe would have held off a little bit longer before dropping that in. Um, it's not the album's only kind of ballad type track, so maybe they were maybe trying to space it out a bit, but I did feel mm-hmm. like I was like, all right, we're going there already. Okay, fair enough. Um, and then we're into um, Machi Bazad, um, which kind of goes back into that kind of groovy, like new metal meets gent side of the band. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can hear that they're trying to keep the, the kind of old school fans of the band on side, you know, by mixing those types of tracks through the album. Um, and it's, you know, it's a decent track. It's got a cool groove. Um, similar ideas to Gadar. Um, although I did like the little bit of clean kind of acoustic guitar towards the end. Um, the one thing I'd, I'd say is, as a, as a drummer, um, the, the kind of drummer in me, did, I did enjoy the kind of percussive side of the band, that Indian, Indian percussion. Um, I thought like the chorus on uh, Dana Dan, um, far more impactful because of that kind of power it had behind it, provided by the percussion. So I, I thought that part of it really worked. Um, it's like that way when you're like, and and they're not in the same league uh, as in the band I'm about to mention are not in the same league as Bloody Wood. But when you first heard El Nino, <laughs> you were going to say mm. that. <laughs> but there was a, but there was a kind of Latin percussion side about that that just like made it a bit more interesting. Yeah, it did. Like, yeah. You know, I just, I just, I, 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 there's a reason that band. I don't want to use the word novelty because that's what people latch on to. But there was a there was a slight novelty aspect about that that made that band sound different from all the other bands around because they had another drummer doing percussive stuff and a kind of Latin vibe. So yeah. when you brought that in, it made them stand out a bit mm-hmm. more than they're not doing the Slipknot thing of banging fucking steel drums <laughs> or anything like that. But they do have additional musicians to bolster the sound. Yeah, there's a bit of that here where that but those elements here. This is why I'm saying it's not a gimmick, right? Those elements here, like you were saying, I think actually really, really work. Yeah. I, I think it just it changes the dynamic of the sound completely, as yeah. opposed to just adding another instrument on top. Yeah, yeah, and I, I enjoyed that. Um, one thing, <laughs> one thing uh, I didn't didn't enjoy. He just smacked his lips. That's a bad. Um, that's a bad sign, ladies and gents. Run, run. It, was, <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't overly prominent in the first half of the album, but the second half of the album onwards um i didn't enjoy that fucking flute <laughs> it is fucking overkill like one or two tracks that's that's cool like that's fine spread that out but half an album of it is too much and it was all i could hear at points i found it I really off-putting did uh, not know you were an anti-flotist oh my god <laughs> um that in conjunction with that the second half of the album, I did find a bit of a struggle. Um, I just kind of felt, and it's kind of things that you've touched on already, I did kind of feel, but that, you know, after, when I got in that second half of the album, I just felt like it, it was kind of treading over old ground. Like a lot of it started to become really repetitive. Um, the, the maybe exception of that was um, bsdk.exe. 
Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's quite new metal, but I thought the riffs on that one were a bit more interesting. I liked the kind of darker tone of the track. Um, but yeah, the second half of the album, I was kind of struggling. I was just feeling like I've kind of heard this already. Um, I think vocally, I think I really like the aggressive vocals. Um, I think he has a really cool tone um, and I like the kind of tonal melody which he works in. Um, I think the, the rap vocals obviously link in well with the more new metal side of their sound. Um, lyrically, yeah, a little cliche, a bit corny at times, but it kind of comes with the genre, to be honest. Um, also not singing in his native language either, no, so give no, him, like, I know plenty. I know plenty of bands from foreign countries that do English albums, and you read the lyrics, and you're like that. This is cheese, yeah. man. Come on, yeah. <laughs> yeah. cliched as fuck. So yeah. we'll give him credit there. Um, but um, overall, um, it, it's probably not an album I can see myself going back to. Uh, if I'm honest, um, I feel like they do have some good ideas. Um, I do feel that it is far too many things going on at times. Yeah. Like they are trying to cram a lot into this album. Um, and I felt there were times where it was just like, there's too much happening. You've got multiple vocal styles, percussion, synths, bass, drums, Indian instrumentation, flute, so much <laughs> fucking flute. And I was just like, guys, I mean, you're not the first band to do this. It happens a lot on debut albums specifically. And we've heard that yeah. a bunch of times, but I think they are at their best when they kind of keep it simple. Um, kind of give the riffs some breathing room don't over flood it with sounds and instrumentation pull back a little at times as well um, I, I enjoy the Indian streak of their sound I think it gives them their personality um, but a lot of the music the kind of metal side of them feels at times a little formulaic and a, a little bit but the second half of the album it was feeling quite underwhelming for me um, there are times where the tracks feel like they're building towards something big and then the riff that kicks in is maybe just like a like a halftime version of the riff that we've heard yeah. before. And I think that might have worked 15 years ago, 20 years ago, but I think now, I think you have to be a little bit more adventurous than that. Um, props to them for trying to put together a very, it's very ambitious um, for a debut, and I'm sure they'll keep working and getting better. Um, at the moment, uh, it's just like a middle of the road, yeah, for me. Not bad, clearly talented guys, but um, not quite my tempo. Um, <laughs> So, um, yeah, mixed feelings on that one. Um, what do we think rating-wise? Where do you think this sits? Um, Kyle, what are you thinking? You know, I really hope that they do carry on and just refine the fuck out of their sound, update mm. their synth sounds and get rid of, you know, stuff that doesn't work because it's like, it's just too much. But for me, yeah, I mean, it's enjoyable to a point, but like you said, the last half is like, it gets a bit like, okay, I've, I've heard what you've got to offer. So mm. I'm going to go with 3.5 out of 5 for this one. Okay. And uh, Duncan? I, well, I, I am not clearly coming in the highest three. Uh, this is oh, a middle shit. of the road album. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, Kyle. Uh, no, it's, it's a three for me. I think, um, like I say, I think there's there's a lot to be proud of here, especially on a debut album. And there's a, a good handful of songs here that I think taken out of this album are complete bangers and complete work for me. Yeah. Um, I, I just... I. That's the thing. I really liked the parts I really liked. Like, yeah, it wasn't yeah, like, the, the parts like, that I didn't like were like, oh, come on, yeah. <laughs> and it just yeah. pulled but the then whole thing I, down. Yeah. You, you know what? It's like that. Like, we'll, we'll be saying that there'll be people out there that like those parts and yeah, really like fine. those parts. Yeah. So I can see on some level by having a sim that maybe is as large as it is, you've got more chance of hitting lots of demographics and lots of different sims. Of, yeah. You know, are, are interesting listeners. I always question how that sims on an album, though, and I think that's made, like just because you can do everything doesn't necessarily mean you should do. It. And it's one thing Dave mentioned, and I hadn't actually I hadn't mentioned it, and I probably should have. Um, the album doesn't flow. No, it's very that's the, oddly it's paced. The, yeah, it's, it's yeah. very bitty. It's very bitty, um, and that is evident by you know, like you were saying, track three kicks in, and it is kind of like a ooh, right. Um, <laughs> like painting this down way too early in the album but there's a few sections of that where you get a kind of more aggressive song kicks in at a time where you wouldn't expect one mm -hmm. or um, or vice versa something comes in a bit more somber when that's not the your album was building towards and it feels yeah. almost anticlimactic. Yeah. so uh, yeah for me it's a three I, I mean they're 
we like what we say will have no impact they they have a huge amount of attention on them that that video for Godard, i think it's our highest streamed video by quite a bit our reaction <laughs> to it and if you check just reaction videos on that are huge they're gonna do fine yeah. um and i will they, these are a, the, the highlight of a band for me that the next album's the curious one because mm. they've got out all at their system they've done everything yeah. on album yeah. one it's how they come back to album two and see from the live scenes around the world what worked, what didn't work, what people mm. jumped around at, what they didn't jump around at. And then you listen, once again, that first Baby Metal album throws everything against the wall. That second Baby Metal album is much more a metal album. Because mm. um, they toured it, they did download and all the rest, and they were like, all right, when we did this bit, no one was really right, we'd strip that back. Yeah. So you, I think you'll find that the second album may be a bit more metal. Yeah, so. yeah. I think three, so. I think, three, um, Dave. Yeah, I, I kind of agree. Um, I think uh, they've been together since what was it, 2016, 2015, 2016 So yeah, they've had like five, almost six years of of writing material. So I think you're right. I think they've kind of got it out of their system on this debut. The second album will probably be more a more kind of true sound of the band. Yeah, um, I, I, I agree with you guys again. I feel like there's probably they're more a kind of singles band than an album band for me right now like mm. they've got some real kind of highlights single wise an album that just didn't really work for me to be honest there was far too much going on too much instrumentation so much flute um and just yeah it was just um yeah it didn't it, and as, as you said it didn't really flow that well either it was just a bit kind of back and forth um i'm gonna go three as well i think i think they are talented um i think for a debut um you know that they've tried a lot um some of it worked some of it didn't um but i'm gonna go i think three overall is is generous and i, I think it's yeah I'd, I'd say three is is ideal for this um so let us know what you think um the album drops on february 18th um i'll put some links below to uh, their their facebook any pre-orders and stuff there is for the album um, I'm sure they'll have, a, as Duncan says, they've got a really good following, so I'm sure there'll be plenty of comments telling us we're wrong. It's fair enough. Um, <laughs> didn't hate it. Got to stress that. Didn't yeah. hate it. Listen didn't to the words it, that no. we said. Yeah. None of those grades are hating grades. No. Like, if you score that out of 10, that's two sixes and uh, seven. So. Yeah. yeah, true. I've um, never been accused of being too generous before. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. Um, that is the review. Um, thank you for checking it out. <laughs> Much appreciated. We'll be back with a new review very soon. But until then, take care. Speak to you soon. Bye, oh, everyone. It's funny because it's true. Bye. <laughs>